Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Coming up, 2015 NFL MVP Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers face off against Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action here are Brandon God and Charles Davis. And coach, we are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome here in New Orleans. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as their Saints get ready to do battle with Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Saints team as they interplay. And they've lost three straight here, and it goes without saying, I guess, they could certainly use a win. And how do they get a win? Because they've lost three straight, I think it's paramount that they get a fast, clean start to this game. On the other side of the field for the visiting Panthers, they come off a disappointment last time out that put an end to their modern... Here we go. The final week of the NFL season. Week 17 is underway. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They'll be led out by the first pick of the second round back in 2001, and that's the veteran Drew Brees. I love just about everything about him. Love his game, love his makeup. Love is moxie, one of my favorite words. This guy's a competitor. Gritty, tough, you name it, he's got it. But he did throw an interception in last week's game. That contributed to a loss. And despite the fact he threw three touchdown passes, he's going to be out there redoubling his efforts and trying to play better. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Here's a second and two now from the 33. They'll run with a rookie. It's Boston Scott. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. A lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. comes out and that's because the offense did not get the playoff in Still time and you can see the head coach he is not happy everyone getting away from him right now because he's frustrated that they didn't get the ball snapped in time so a little bit of a stiffer challenge now first and 15 following the delay of game Ready. You waiting? here's scott and tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31 tackle made by thomas davis and the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Ready? Now Breeze throwing on second down. He's got a man open. It's Cameron Meredith. And he finally goes down, but not before reaching the 21. A big-time play there for New Orleans. 48 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. Oh. 
So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. And he'll win it over the middle. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. The numbers for Hill a week ago. Six catches, 130 yards. And that put him over 1,000 yards for the season. And the benchmark for running backs, 1,000 yards. The same for receivers. When you have that kind of a year, you've had a monster one. Toward the sideline, and he will have the first down as he was able to keep the feet in bounds. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. The confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sidelines thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. And the starting crew defensively for Carolina. And I enjoy watching Kwan KK Short work inside as a defensive tackle. 24 and a half sacks from that spot over the last three seasons. That puts him in the company of guys like Geno Atkins, Aaron Donald, Fletcher Cox. When you want an inside pass rusher, think about KK Short. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Hey, working from the gun, it's Breeze. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. Ted Ginn scoring a touchdown against his former mates. And the Saints take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. You have to imagine for a team that's lost three straight games, scoring first in this first quarter has to feel pretty good. That's feel great for them. And also, it's a nice signal to the rest of the team because we talk about complimentary football all the time. So they've now signaled to the defense, now signaled to the kicking game. Hey, we're here to play in this one. We're going to do our part. Let's see if you guys will do the exact same, and we can break this losing streak. Lutz with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Flag down. This could set him back. Illegal block in the back. Return team. Yeah, this is going to put him back with a not great field position. So they really got zero benefit at all, right? Sometimes you can absorb a penalty when you get a big return. Then the penalty brings it back, but you still have great field position. As you pointed out, not in this case. Flushed out right. Finding room at the 30, and all the way up to the 35-yard line. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. Oh, my Cam. There's times when I'm not analyzing up here. I'm just appreciating. Led NFL quarterbacks in rushing last year. He is truly the ultimate weapon at that position. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a carry, it's C.J. Anderson. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Now look, that wasn't a huge gain, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched him more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. Throwing on third down, Newton. This one complete to Devin Funches. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Newton finding Funches for the Panther first down. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. Come on now. Right. 
Cam's going to run the option right. And an alley to run. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Back-to-back 11-yard -back gains, and they've got another first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. First down. Here's the run with Anderson. And an alley to run. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing lead. I thought this was the era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Newton now to throw. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Cameron Jordan in there to drop him, and his great season continues. 13 sacks for him now on the year. This offensive line has struggled. In fact, when we sat down with the coach, he said, it's been in tatters lately. They allowed six sacks in their last game. Just gave up another one right there. In tatters, so it sounds a little bit like this right now. Exactly. It's like that paper being ripped. And right now, they've got to find a way to get it back together. This is Newton off the play fake to McCaffrey. And that's caught by Smith. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. And a nice gain of 21 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. The first red zone opportunity for the Panthers thus far. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. So he got three of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. Tackle is made by Cameron Jordan. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. On second down, Anderson, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll be a loss of a yard, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. Uh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. They're two for two on third down conversions on this drive. This one tough. They need nine yards on third down. Newton out of throw. Screen play, Anderson. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Well contained there defensively. The screen gets only a yard, and it's fourth. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. What you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Fourth down, and here's Graham Gano now in the field goal unit for the Panthers. And Gano's kick is right through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. 
maybe that's the way they should look at it. This is fielded a couple yards deep. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Out comes the Saints offensive unit and the NFC playoff race. Let's have a look at it. They had the touchdown on the opening drive of the ball game. It was countered by just a field goal. So, hey, if your guys can do that for four quarters, you're in good shape. Yeah, it is a team game, so that's just good complimentary football. But, you know, I know I'm no brainiac, but you trade sixes for threes, things are going to work out in your favor. They go play action here on first down. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right, got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Shotgun now for Breeze. Caught on the left side by Ginn. 70th catch for him on the year, and like so many others, this goes for a first down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. On first down, Scott. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. One quarter down, 7-3 the score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. They'll run it now out of the gun. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. It's a loss of two, now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Ready. Ready. From the gun, it's Breeze. And that one drops incomplete as he got popped as he was throwing it. Nothing open downfield, and he had to get that one out in a hurry because he just knew he was about to take a big shot. Probably couldn't get his legs into the throw. Became an all-arm throw trying to check it down to his running back. Incomplete. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. The Carolina offense making their way out. We take a look at the playoff picture in the NFC. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him with contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him with contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe it. Super toe. Give him nine there on the first down completion. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. 
but everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know they got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's right. That goes for a gain of 31. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. Now a first down throw for Newton. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Demario Davis. And the return will be stopped at the 34-yard line. It's almost like you can see the look of frustration on his face. Four interceptions last week. We talked about it all week. What did he do wrong? And another one here in the first half. And you can understand the frustration. You actually feel his pain a little bit. But the worst thing he can do is what you're seeing right now, showing the other team that he's frustrated. All they're going to do is double their efforts to make him even more frustrated. He's got to gather himself, compose himself, and keep fighting. Well, he talked a lot about erasing that loss last week, getting back in the win column. We'll see how he responds. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Throw left side, taken in by Hill. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. a second and two after that last catch good for eight yards Ready. Ready. they'll run with Scott and not much there at all maybe a yard up to the 43 well he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far and after that last run not much is going to change in that area he hasn't been able to get anything going and really the offensive line not helping him much Breeze to throw on third and one. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. Breeze on the hook up to Thomas for the New Orleans first. They'll run on first down. Scott. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Ready. You're waiting. You're on second down, here's Breeze. That's caught by Meredith right side. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Here's Breeze. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the... And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Josh Hill. 
his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Saints add on to their lead. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. Lutz good on the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. A drive that time of six plays, and it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. And the Panthers coming out now. And in enemy territory last time through the interception. We'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How, how much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try and take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Here's Newton now on second down. A dump off to Anderson. And he'll be brought down right around the 37th. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup if someone's trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Craig Robertson in on the stop. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Back to the ground. This time it's Anderson. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. And now Anderson is slow to get up. Staying down after that last play. And this is certainly not what you want to see in the final week of the year. We'll be back. Come on now. The Panthers on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and four. A shotgun snap for Newton. Got his target, Samuel. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. First target, first catch, and a first down. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. On second down, McCaffrey. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. From the gun on third down, Newton. He hits White, complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. 
And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey. And a short game down to about the 33. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now the former Oregon man. This is Kenyon Barner, and he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot. He picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. This is McCaffrey on the give, and this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading the play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. The Panthers on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This time it's third and three. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to New Orleans after this. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. Newton on third down. That's complete right around the eight. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Out of the gun, Newton. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by Marshawn Lattimore. Oh, and he's into the clear. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. What you just saw there, first round talent. Second year, even more success. A pick six for a touchdown. A great play. And it's tough for these guys, you've told me before, to adjust in the secondary as a first-year guy. So that sophomore season is big for them. They really start to expand the playbook for them even more. Sometimes they dumb it down a little bit to make them comfortable year one. By year two, they should have all the nuances. And now they've adjusted to the speed of NFL play as well. Showed right there. to try to add the PAT. Lutz with the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. 
So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here come the Panthers now, set to take over on offense. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. but they told him, they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. Now, the first play of the drive there is incomplete. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's a perfect word for it, precise, because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it's not just West Coast offense either. He's putting the ball downfield as well. False start, offense. So from 2nd 10, it'll now go to 2nd 15. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, 2nd and 15. From the gun, here's Newton. Finding his safety valve here, that's complete. Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. To throw on 3rd down. Newton, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. So on fourth down, kicking it away here, Michael Pilardi. Back deep for the Saints is Ted Ginn. A nice little juke. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. How does the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here? The partner just looking at some of the struggles they've had this season. The playoffs are not in their future. As they start to peer toward the offseason, what moves might they make? I think the running back position, and I know we talk all the time about the NFL being a passing league, but the teams that run the ball effectively, they're the ones that go deep into the playoffs and go to the Super Bowl. They have to upgrade here. And you and I both know in recent years in the draft, people have shied away from taking a runner early, but if there's that special one there, I say they go get him. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now Breeze. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. That was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. First down is Breeze. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on to it second down. This secondary has been roasted in this first half, but they get a measure of revenge there. Nice play on the deep ball. Yeah, they're going to need a few more plays like that in order to get their confidence fully back, but that's one step in the proper direction. Breeze will try again on second down. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. Mario Addison in there to drop him. And his great season continues. 13 sacks for him now on the year. 
Well, maybe that can give him a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a jolt. One of the few things has gone right defensively. Because other than that, it's really been a first half to forget. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze, and the Saints up against it here. So we've come upon halftime here in week 17. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you two in a bit. For now, plenty of early game action around the NFL to get you caught up on. So let's get to it. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The final two quarters of the NFL regular season are upon us as the second half of Week 17 is underway. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a real do I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. They stay on the ground, McCaffrey again. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun on third down, Newton. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. A gain of seven, and they pick up the first. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Newton now, 11 of 15 through the air. Here's first and 10. Now a first carry for their fullback. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And that's a nice gain by him on first down, picking up some key yardage. They'll run it here. This is their fullback getting the carry. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll make it third down. After a play like that, it should be congratulations all the way around, I think, because if you can stop a big fullback like that, that's not easily done. Yeah, he does not go down easily. You're right, but he did there. The Panthers on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. This is third and four. Operating from the gun. Newton. It's grabbed over the middle by White. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. 
And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Now a play fake here on first down. Wide open receiver complete. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A really nice gain of 25 yards. We often with Cam Newton talk a lot about his legs. Don't forget about that arm. He can throw it on a rope. He can loft it. He's got the touch that's been developed throughout his career. But the big part about just watching him throw it, it seems almost effortless. So offense moving a little too slow there. Could not get set. And Still they get the penalty. Down. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. This is Newton off the play fake to McCaffrey. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the 5-yard line. Now whistles here, and it looks like we've got a Panther that's having some difficulty down there getting up. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets halfway home from the four down to the two-yard line. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? Yeah, didn't get the push they needed. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Well, that's the big drawback to this play. Even if somehow the quarterback pitches it, he's not immune to the big hit. In this case, he kept it and absorbed it anyway. Now Newton on third and goal. And this is going to be incomplete. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Gano's kick is right through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend. Don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Huh, you like Come that on. What does that mean, break out the, just because you break, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here, first and 10 at their own 24. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse. And I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop it. And he's got this down to the 35. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Here we go. 
Breeze now. Pretty amazing. 14 of 16 throwing the ball. It's first and 10. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Back to the air on second down. It's Breeze to the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. And that'll bring up second down. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. And especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Breeze again here on second and ten. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by Mike Adams. He was trying to hit Thomas that time. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Panthers now as their offense comes back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. On the give, this is their fullback. And a short pick up here as he'll get up to about the 22-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Here's Newton. Now they go screen. It's complete. Good contain. No gain on the screen, and it'll bring up fourth down. I know you've got a baseball background, right? A little bit. Started yeah. minor league yeah, ball. Yeah, you did some of that, right? What do they do when they do the signals? An indicator, right? It, Tells starts... you whether it goes or not, yeah. Yeah, whether the play's on or not. How about the indicators offensive linemen give when they're getting ready to run a screen pass? And if those get red, <laughs> well, we just saw that there, didn't we? No gain. No gain. Deciphered it and finished the play off. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now it's Ginn. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they had a nice little drive going last time. Threw the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about... Hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? Dontari Poe in on the stop. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Ready, 
Breeze to throw on second down. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. Breeze to another longtime vet, Ginn, for the New Orleans first. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. He's going to sling this deep downfield into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Captain Mutterlin. And spins away. And a very good return as he takes this all the way up to the 35-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. getting set to take the field and down on the scoreboard certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive punting the football sense of urgency has to take over for them here they know the score they know the situation and by the way the punter no longer exists for their offense that's how they have to treat this drive they need points big time now following the interception here's newton Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Ready. 180. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Panthers in possession of the football, but facing a deficit here as we get to the fourth and final quarter of play. Newton looking to throw on third and one. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. And that'll get him the first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. Newton. Throwing for his running back and he's got him complete. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. It's a gain of five. And that'll make this a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. To throw on second down is Newton. Over the middle to Smith. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. From the red zone now, Newton. Smith catches left side. 
And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. They got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. Diving for the end zone, and the ball's knocked out. The Saints say they have it, and they do. Well, let's see now, Charles. That's seven turnovers between last week and this week. Three here in this game, four in last week's game. You know I do my research, right? And I go all the way back to the best coaches that have ever been in this game. And all of them started with ball security in some form or another, understanding that taking care of the ball was the key to winning games. They can't believe what they're seeing right now because they spend all this time on it with the fundamentals, taking care of it, tucking it away, and they're not doing it. Zach line with it, the fullback. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Now, that's the defense that they were looking for, being able to get extra bodies to the point of attack to deal with the big guy carrying the ball. You really don't want to be in a position where it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle with him. Back here is goal line. Here's Breeze. In trouble, and the ball's out. It's in the end zone loose. And this is recovered zoned by the defense. My goodness, what a late turn of events here. This defense, Charles, they needed some type of a spark to help get them back in this game. I think they just got their spark. No doubt about it. You know, that's all they discussed. How can we get ourselves moving again? How can we get our team going? This definitely qualifies. And now in a nine-point game, they'll still just need to go for one here. Gano the extra point as this gets him back within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. So not only the cough up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Out comes the Saints offensive unit and the NFC playoff race. Let's have a look at it. And it's all come down to this, hasn't it? Final week of the regular season. As this year's playoffs play out anything like the regular season has gone, could be in for a wild and fun month of January. And we can break the rules because we can look ahead. All right, there's not a coach out there that's ever said to their team, all right, let's look three, three weeks down the road. Pressure comes in. He's brought down. It's a Panther sack. Mario Addison in there to get him. Sack number 14 for him on the year. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Ready. Yellow lady, yellow lady. Shotgun now for Breeze. Gim has it complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. On first down, Scott. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 
Ten more there and another first down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Right back to him on first down. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. On second down, Scott. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. They'll run on first down. Scott, and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Keenan Robinson, the one that got him down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. On second down, here's Breeze. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. From the gun, it's Breeze. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And Lutz puts this one through. And that will extend their lead even further. A big one there. That gives them a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, have let a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender, you go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And so close to hitting pay dirt last time, fumbling down near the goal line. Now, how does that affect their psyche this time around? It's a tester, that's for sure, because to be that close and come away with no points is really disappointing, not just for the guys on offense, 
But the defensive players, too, who thought, hey, we're going to put some points up and have a little momentum going. They've got to find a way to just get it out of their minds, let it go, memory. and move on to the next series. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Decent start to the drive there. Of course, they need the touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal. Yeah, those guys are into it. How about the guys on the sidelines? You see the coaches signaling, all the personnel groups up on the sideline, ready to go in and out of the game. They've got to condense their time now in order to try and get back into it. Quick throw. That's complete on the inside slant. 11 yards there as they connect on the quick slant. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. On first and ten, Newton. His throw incomplete. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Back to the air, Newton on second down. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 15 yards through the air and a first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. And that's 30 yards now in the last two plays, back-to-back -back 15 yarders, and they're rolling. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. They go play action here on first down. That is caught right at the ten-yard line. And he gets it all the way down inside the ten and mark him at the five. Twenty-three yards on the play. Again, Newton. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. So a big play coming for the Panthers. They'll go for two. They're going to try and run. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. But he will not get in here. He stopped up short of the goal line, and this will remain a five-point game. Defensively, certainly not fooled there. Play started at the two, and he was tackled at the two. That has to feel good for them. Not happy about having given up the touchdown, but stopping the two-point conversion gives them a little bit of a lift as they head to the bench. Gano out to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. On first down, Scott, and he powers his way up past the 30. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. So they come up on second down. If they can get another run like we just saw, would likely put an end to this thing. They go again with Scott. 
The Panthers are going to use the second of their timeout as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Here's the fullback, Zach Line. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. Now the Panthers going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Second and 12, and you'd have to assume another all-out effort to stop the run is coming. The give to the fullback on the dive. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. So here we go, Charles, third down. Any chance you're throwing? I don't think so. I think you got to keep the clock rolling here. And indeed, they will keep it on the ground. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. So indeed, they did keep it on the ground, but now it's fourth down, so this one's maybe not quite over. The clock is still their ally, though, so just no panic here. Let it run all the way down. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. One last throw here for Newton. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this one is incomplete. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still... You were wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So for New Orleans, it will wind up a 500 season as the win means they'll finish right at 8-8. Eight and eight. And by just about all accounts, not the type of year they were hoping to have. Meanwhile, for Carolina, this loss will mean they finish the season right at 500 at 8-8. Eight eight. But they've got better days in their future. Of that, you can be sure. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.